first got interested in art pretty early on in my childhood, um, belonging to an equestrian background where I practically grew up around horses and saw my father participate in various equestrian sports. I immediately developed this deep admiration for these creatures. Um, I remember endlessly drawing sketches like these little stick figure horses and trying to perfect them day after day in an attempt to express my love for horses and how much I yearned for any sort of involvement or interaction with them. So I guess I would ultimately say that horses are my muse, were my muse, and they are what originally drew me to art in the first place. The key reasons why I wanted to pursue a career in art, they're actually, they vary a lot. So pursuing a career in art was not something I always knew I wanted to do. Um, from a young age, I did have strengths in creativity and I love to draw, but I didn't realize art would be a career for me. Um, I was always encouraged to pursue something more conventional, more lucrative, like sciences or dentistry or something. It's also this entire societal pressure um, that really engulfed me at one point in my life. So while these subjects, while sciences, did widen my view of the world, it truly felt like I was missing out on a core aspect of who I was. Um, that moment of epiphany for me um, that made me realize that art is what I truly wanted to pursue in life was in my second year of A-levels when I was elected the vice president of my art society and I went on to participate in all sorts of intercity competitions and events and I went on to win three awards, um, some of them team awards, some of them individual first place awards. And um, it was just such a eureka moment for me. It gave me that clarity and that confidence that I needed um, to figure out that this is something I really want to do. So in deciding what to do for me, it boiled down to two questions, I would say. One was the question of regret. I asked myself if I would regret not trying to pursue a career in art and the answer was yes. Later in my life I would look back and regret not trying. The second was about purpose. Where did I fit in and how could I best contribute to the world? I thought about all the possible future careers in science and although I was good at what I did, but with my art, I felt like I was more unique, like I could stand out and I could really um, express my own narrative and my emotions. And this made me think that I could really make an impact and be more fulfilled in the art world or the art scene. Um, so yeah, once I realized these two things, it was a no brainer for me. So while I'm painting, I... Um, it's such a transcendent moment for me, creating art itself. It's so strongly influenced by my own equestrian background and my love for horses. It truly is a testimony of my admiration and my narrative that it does give me the same rush and the same feeling that I would have while being around horses or participating in any sport. So all of these activities for me are so interlinked and it truly is my love and my passion at the end of the day that does drive my artistic process, that influences the compositions, it's just the time and the effort that I put in, it's just so um, subtly interlinked. So yeah, it truly is like my little oasis of serenity, I would say. I have um, experienced some challenges and difficulties in my artistic career and particularly when it came to acceptance within my particular niche um, with such a personal narrative subtly woven into my artwork. Historically I would say horses are a subject matter that have been sidelined and so informed by contemporary art culture I would find myself challenging the very definition of equine portraiture in an attempt to elevate it into a visual narrative that contributes to both the history and mythology of horses. And um, of course, juxtaposing that with cultural elements and um, 
that really highlight its sig uh, symbolic, I'm sorry, symbolic significance. So, um, yes, yeah, so truly articulating and elevating that definition was a huge challenge in itself. But I also feel like in today's day and age, the definition of art has been expanded to include all forms of expression. And while that's an absolutely beautiful notion within contemporary art, I have noticed that more historical and more traditional forms of art, of um, art styles, art movements, have been slowly fading into the background. And so I really try to, or like I actively attempt to revive that cultural movement within my own artwork, specifically in Pakistan. I'd been applying for my undergrad and coming to university, I wanted to evolve my practice by having access to a culture outside of my own that would be um, welcoming and submersive and would have great depth, especially within the art community. And um, Ulster University wasn't only providing me with that platform, but it also gave me the scholarship that I really needed at that time. And it had a great art program. So, I mean, no complaints there. And being in Northern Ireland over the past few years has, it's been incredible. I mean, Northern Ireland has really worked on reviving its, um, its culture, its identity, it's um, it's uh, promoting its new and up upcoming art, contemporary art scene. And so having been part of it and having been right in the middle of it has really, it's been such an immersive experience and it's really helped me challenge my practice and evolve as an artist, I would say. It truly has been a growing experience. to be the recipient of the KPMG Young Artist of the Year Award, to receive an award of that magnitude from such a globally renowned and leading organization such as KPMG, it's been an absolute honor. Um, the, rec the recognition and the magnitude of the award speaks volumes, and it's definitely that boost I needed at this age, at this point in my career, to help me go that extra mile and really um, thrive and go the distance with my artistic career. So it is, I wouldn't say it's a stepping stone, it's truly more than I could have asked for it. And I'm honestly very grateful. I feel like I have the year planned out a bit. Um, there is an online art forum in Pakistan called the Pakistan Art Forum and it is the biggest art forum um, in the country at the moment and one of the leading ones within Asia. So I will be exhibiting my work with them in March. Um, it's their upcoming Emerging Artists exhibition and um, I've just started working on it recently um, and it's such an exciting um, venture to take on. So. Just a few more months and then I will have that exhibition soon at their gallery launch in March. And um, apart from that, I, I mean, with the global pandemic at hand and everything, I'm trying to make most of every opportunity that I can get and taking it one step at a time. So um, after PAF, it's hopefully Ajaz Art Galleries in Lahore, another leading contemporary art gallery. And yeah, I guess we'll see where life takes me from there. But so far, those are the plans. I feel like for many people, creativity is synonymous with the arts, music, design, dance, etc. But we don't realize how it's very much intertwined with the subject of business and how creativity as a whole um, applies to so many aspects within our life. So, I mean, organizations today operate in a highly competitive global environment, making creativity absolutely crucial. And um, creativity is what fuels big ideas, challenges employees' way of thinking and opens more doors and more avenues to new business opportunities. So I guess art has the power to inspire. 
and no matter what field you branch out into you still find that most individuals will be drawn to aesthetic experiences and um, that enhance a sense of inspiration and thus a better work environment in general so I definitely do feel like these two are very strongly interlinked.